historic puzzle. When I first had the pleasure of seeing my grandfather, Pearl Roscoe's rare color slides of the Vermilion area, I happened across a few that I found rather puzzling. They depicted what obviously looked like terrific storm damage in a cemetery. Because the slides were not marked, I had no idea as to their specific location other than what I have just written. And then I came across an 8x10 black and white glossy Rudy Mock photograph that made my grandfather's slides identifiable. The night before, a tornado had come out of the southwest. It cut across the Risden farm on Risden Road, headed northeast toward the lake where it destroyed the Sherrod home just east of Cohen Road and then bounced across West Lake Road to the home of Charlie and Katie Crop at stop 130. It leveled their home, as well as their barn along with 200 chickens, and caused the tragic death of Mrs. Crop's cousin, Josephine Lowe, who was there on a visit from her home in Cleveland. Mrs. Crop, who was trapped in the wreckage of the home for 45 minutes, suffered only minor injuries. All that remained at stop 130 when the storm passed was the garage. It is still standing. The home of Fred Crop, Charlie's brother, just to the east was untouched. The floor of Charlie's barn rested against the house. The storm had lifted it, transported it 1,000 feet, and softly set it down by the kitchen door, without disturbing shingle nor nail of his house or outbuildings. Turning southeast, the storm jumped the NYC railroad tracks and tapped the Bacchus home on Adams Street. Mrs. Lydia Bacchus was critically injured when a wall collapsed on her. Her husband somehow escaped without harm. At least five additional homesteads were swatted by the mid-August storm. On State Street the H. Rossman home was twisted off its foundation. On Douglas Street the Cecil Rossman and Edward Troxell homes were also damaged. And on Mason Road the Krebs home was grazed, and Carl Washburn's barn doors, part of a haystack, as well as an entire apple orchard were swept away in the whirling summer winds. In 1866 the village of Vermilion had purchased three acres of land along Mason Road from one Amazon Washburn to use as a permanent cemetery. The property adjoined a one-half-acre plot of land that pioneer settler, John Beardsley, had earlier in the century deeded to school district No. 6 and their successors, to be used as a burial ground. The additional land was then cleared, graded, and a good number of young maple trees were planted. Thus was it named, Maple Grove, Cemetery. During ensuing years more acreage was added. By August of 1943 the Memorial Park was comprised of more than seven acres of land, and the young maples that had been planted nearly a century earlier now towered over the grounds and monuments. And as these terrible storms have no respect for life, human or otherwise, they also have no mercy for the dead. On August 13, 1943, the same storm that had stolen the life of Josephine Lowe, arbitrarily dismantled many of the monuments in Maple Grove, as well as uprooting and splintering almost all the old maples that once stood guard over them. The accompanying Rudy Mock photograph shows the damage done to the cemetery on that day. The other shows the area as it looks today. Were it not for my discovery of the Mock photo I would not have known any of this ever happened and I would have been puzzling over my grandfather's color slides for the remainder of my life.